Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Hank and in this video I'm going to show you how to use value returning functions in your Python programs. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what is a value returning function? Well, a value returning function is very similar to void functions in a couple of ways. Uh, one, it can accept arguments, right, just like void functions can. So these value returning functions can have zero or more parameters so that way they can accept zero or more arguments and they're going to execute some statements right you're going to have a block of code that gets assigned to the function that can be executed uh, as often as you need to through function calls right but value returning functions are unlike void functions in that they can use return statements that utilize the return keyword to return values, right? So what that means is that uh, we'll now be able to get values out of the function, right? So we'll be able to take a value back with us when we return to the function call, right? So this is similar to other functions you've used Right, so some examples of value returning functions that you've used before have been input, right, or uh, float, okay, or format. These guys are value returning functions because once we returned from executing the function, they brought a value back with them. Okay, so let's take a look at some uh, example programs. Okay, so for this example, I've already got my main function uh, defined and my function call for main, right? So this is the function where uh, all the mainline logic is going to happen. So for this first example, I'll write a value returning function that will be responsible for adding two numbers together. Right, so what this function is going to do, it's going to accept two arguments, uh, two numbers as arguments, and then it's going to add those numbers together, and then return them, right, or return the sum of those two arguments. And so that value that gets returned by that function will then be able to be used for further processing by the program. Okay, so let's go ahead and define a value returning function. So I'll call this um, uh, my add. Right, for my add function. Okay, and I'm gonna have a parameter list that's gonna have two parameters because I'm gonna be adding two numbers together. Right, and then inside of the function, I'll have a local variable named sum, which is gonna be responsible for adding the values together. And then I'll introduce this new keyword return, right, and uh, I'll add to uh, that statement, that return statement. The variable sum right so what's going to happen is is that two numbers are going to go into this function are going to enter this function and then uh, the sum is going to leave the function so now we'll go down into our main and we'll have a function call for my add right so let's say that you're going to hard code in a couple of numbers here five and two okay so five and two going to happen uh, and what we can now do is we can assign this function to some other variable, right? And I'll call this other variable, I don't know, um, result, okay? And so what's gonna happen is, is that when I run this program, the my add function is gonna get called, and then the five and the two are gonna get copied into A and B, respectively, and then A and B are gonna get added together, which now contain a copy of five and two, so that's gonna be seven, that's gonna be assigned to sum, and then we're gonna return the sum. So when we return back to the function call, right, it's as if the function call got replaced by the value that was returned. So what that means is that that seven's then gonna end up inside of the result variable, right? So it's as if my add got replaced by the result, right? Which was sum uh, that we returned from the my add function. So that's gonna have seven in this case, okay? And so then we can print that result. And we can see uh, that it's going to do just what I was saying it was going to do, right? 
So that's how I can return a value from a function. Okay, so let me show you another thing that you can do with value returning functions. This first one returns a single value, right? But in Python, it supports the ability to um, return multiple values, right? So let us assume that I wanted to ask the user or I wanted to, um, yeah, I wanted to ask the user for the dimensions for a rectangle, right? So I might do something like this. I might say, you know, get uh, dimensions, call a function get dimensions, okay? And then um, I may ask them, you know, a couple questions. It'll give me the length of uh, the width, right? Or give me, yeah, give me the, the, the length of the width, the measurement of the width, and give me the measurement of, um, you know, the length of the thing, right? So length and width, I need those two dimensions. So I might do something like this. Let's create a local variable called uh, length, right? And then we're going to ask the user for that value, right? So we'll say uh, enter length, okay? And then I'll need the width, right? So then I'll do a similar kind of thing, right? So this time enter the width, okay? And then once I've done that, I've got the length and the width. And so I'll go ahead and I'll return the length and the width, right? So you can return multiple values uh, with a return statement in Python. Other languages, C-based languages, for example, don't let you do that. You're only allowed to return a single value. Python, separate them between, separate them with commas, which you want to return, not a problem. So now when I go to make this function call, right, I could do something that looks like this, right? So uh, back in main, I'll have a variable called len, and I'll have a variable called width. Right, or wid, how about that? Oh, can't use len, that's a keyword, sorry. Uh, how about just L and W? We'll just do that, L and W, okay? Uh, let's see here, and then we'll assign to it the function call for get dimensions, okay? And then, just to prove that it works, we'll print the contents of L and W, okay? So now, function's being executed. We made the, our function call right here. So we jumped up to the function definition and right now, asking for the user to enter the length. Okay, so let's say I do four. Okay, then within that function, we're going to ask the user for the width. And let's say I type two. Okay, when I do that, then four and two is going to be returned. The four, which was in length, can be returned and then be assigned to L back in main. The width, which is two, going to be returned. Right, we're going to come back to the function call and return is going to be assigned to two. And so when we print out the contents of L and W, we're going to see uh, 4 and 2, right? Well, 4.0 and 2.0 because we did store them as floats after all, okay? Now, one more thing I want to show you, okay? We can return expressions from functions, okay? So let's say that I want to subtract a couple numbers, okay? So I can do something like this. Uh, and rather than having to create a whole nother variable here, you know, I might be tempted to do something like this, and I certainly could do it. Uh, if I want to find the difference, I could return the difference. Can do that. It's going to work just fine, as I'll show you here in just a second. All right? I could say uh, result equals my sub uh, four and six, and then print the result. All right? This could work totally fine. Okay, you can see there's the minus two. Okay, uh, but I don't have to do that, right? I can, because this right here is gonna be minus two. I can just go ahead and return, save myself a variable here. I can just return the result of the expression, right? So if I do that, right, there's the minus two. Okay, so a little bit more efficient to do that because I have one fewer variable, one fewer operation, totally fine. Um, right here, I just hit control C to terminate the program so I didn't have to enter in the length and the width. Uh, okay, so is there anything else I want to show you with this? Um, I mean, you can also return literals too, right? So just, you know, you can return literals, okay? So um, I can do something like this. Right, and there's nothing nothing wrong with that. So I'm not just limited to uh, returning 
um, expressions or um, variables, right? Literals are fair game too, and we go ahead and run this, and you can see there's me returning the negative one uh, from the function, okay? All right, great. I think that's everything that I want to show you for this video. So what did we talk about? Talked about value returning functions, kind of give you the uh, highlights of the differences between a value returning function and a void function, and went through and showed you multiple examples of creating uh, value returning functions. And I've got uh, a value returning function that returns a single variable. I've got one that returns a expression. I've got one that returns a literal. And I even have a value returning function that can return multiple values. Okay. And showed you how to use those in a simple, stupid little program. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.